Welcome to Outdoor Travel Channel. Are you guys hungry? Well, it's Traeger Day, so let's get to cooking, everyone. Well, hello, everybody. This is Rob, and today is a Traeger Day. And this day, I'm kind of excited because today I'm doing something I've always wanted to do, and uh, it costs a pretty penny. But today, I'm going to make and get it out of the bag with one hand a prime rib roast so this puppy right here so uh i paid forty dollars for this puppy and i'm going to cook it in the traeger slow cook it and i'm going to do injection so i'm going to use a traeger rub um and prime rib rub <laughs> and I'm going to inject it using my Beast injector. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I love this thing. It works really good. So uh, I hope you enjoy the journey with me. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of stuff in the refrigerator. But uh, yeah, we're going to do <coughs> prime rib. Well, not prime rib, but a ribeye. Um, beef ribeye and uh <laughs> i hope it's good i don't want to mess this up so uh, anyway uh i'm going to bring you on the journey of cooking this in my traeger all right so now i'm going to get my rub ready and so the way i'm going to do this so i'll show you right here is i'm going to use uh garlic salt black pepper smoke smoked paprika salt and i'm going to use holy cow barbecue rub and I like it because it's got more of a uh, coffee kind of taste to it. Um, but anyway, so once I get this, uh, I'm going to cover it with olive oil. And then I'll show you how I do that. And I'm going to put all the seasonings on it. Then I'm going to wrap it and let it sit for about oh, two, three hours. And then the next thing I'll do is injection. Uh, what I want to get in the injection is a little more... Uh, uh, garlic so I'm going to use a garlic powder or um, in the mix and uh, just a few other uh, combinations of probably uh, beef stock and uh, inject it just to give it a little more flavor but not to get too carried away and then uh, let that uh, and I, I'm, I don't have to let it sit for that because it's going to be injected and then I'm going to put it on the uh, trigger and I'm going to cook it around 250 275 slow cook it i'm going to go for internal temperature of about oh 135 degrees uh because i want it to be kind of rare because you end up reheating it a lot and then last but not least uh um i'm going to be using a hickory uh pellet uh, so that's the flavor i'm going for today and i really hope this comes out good guys So before I go any farther, um, I'm doing the back side and the sides with salt and pepper, uh, garlic salt, and uh, then I'll be adding all my other ingredients. But one thing I keep around all the time is a paper towel because when you're dealing with the olive oil and you keep going to the sink to wash your hands, 
it's still hard to get the olive oil off your fingers. So I always keep a paper towel around as I'm moving the piece of meat around. I'm constantly getting the oil off my hands so I can <laughs> handle things so I don't get it all over my, my seasoning bottles here. So I hope that's kind of helpful. Keep paper towels around. It really helps. All right, so now, before I forget, <laughs> I'm going to add on my uh, smoked pap paprika and my uh, holy cow rubbing um, seasoning and wrap this thing up and let it sit for about two or three hours. So while my ribeye is in the refrigerator, uh, letting all that goodness soak in, this is what I'm going to use for my injection. So I'm going to use beef, a beef broth cube, uh, paprika again, salt and pepper, and a little garlic salt. And I'll warm that up, dissolve it, and then I'll use my beast injector to uh, uh, hit the hit the. <laughs> hit my uh, ribeye. I keep wanting to say prime rib, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, and uh, I'll let you see how I do that. Right after I do that, I'm ready to put in the, uh, well, in the Traeger and uh, slow cook it. It's gonna take probably two, three hours or when I get my temperature up to 135. And then I'm gonna pull it and let it rest uh, for a good half hour to an hour. And then we should be able to uh, devour it. So anyway, uh, I'll show you our next step. All right, so I'm going to make one modification to my inject injection uh, ingredients. I'm going to add a couple more things. I'm going to put a little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of onion salt, some rosemary, and some thyme. Now, once I uh, get a pot out, I'm going to get a pot out. I'm going to uh, make my beef broth. Oh, maybe a cup, two cups worth. And I'm going to put it in the uh, in a pot, and I'm going to boil it all together. And with all these ingredients, I'm going to have stuff floating in it. So I'm going to uh, uh, strain it out, and then that's what I'm going to use for injecting. So I'll show you that process. Okay, I'm going to start making my injection solution. So I'm starting off with about a cup and a half of water, and I'm going to add all my ingredients in it, and I'll just show you how I did that. Nothing is measured precisely. Just go with it. <laughs> I'll show you the labels.
Well, I'm ready to start cooking, so what I'm going to do first is uh, preheat my trigger uh, with the smoker setting for about five minutes, get it fired up. Then I set it for 275, but I'm trying to hit 250. And uh, that's just a little thing I noticed with my trigger. So let's get this thing started. And make sure you open the lid. Next thing I'll be doing here is cleaning my grill. And uh, I just use one of these guys. So for safety, by the way, on any of these uh, steel brushes, these things will break off. And that could get in your meat and actually hurt somebody. So I always make sure and buffer my grill after I've scraped it to make sure I don't have any uh, little strands on my grill. That would be a terrible thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a little grill oil on my grill and I'll just keep things from sticking. And we'll let her heat up and we'll throw it in. Oh, and by the way, I will be using a electronic thermometer. Um, I'm using a Thermal 4 Pro uh, right here. And uh, I'll be putting that into my meat. I'm going to be trying to go for 135, get real rare. Because you know how that goes. You can't eat it all. So you're going to reheat it, and every time you reheat it, it cooks a little more. So uh, the important thing is, once I get it to 135, I'm going to let it rest for at least a half hour to an hour and it'll continue cooking a little bit but anyway looking forward to this Well, now that that's in the trigger, I can monitor the temperature on this wireless, and we're going to work for 135. Then we're going to pull it out and uh, let it rest. All right, guys, so we're up to 132 degrees, and uh, I've kind of decided I wanted to be somewhere between 130 and 135. Let's take a look at it and see what it looks like. that look delicious or what. So let's pull it out and we're going to let it rest. So this is a finished product, nice and cooked like to perfection and uh, looks good. So what we're going to do now is cut off the bone here. My wife and I are just going to share this piece and we have a few more meals. So there you go guys, one yummy looking roast. This ribeye came out tender, delicious and very yummy and was a great dinner for me and my wife. Hey, thanks for watching our Traeger Grill ribeye roast. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our video all over the whole wide world. We'd appreciate it. See you next time, guys. Bye.